Hey all, welcome to ShareTrack. This is Raj here. Um, this video is um, just to get all our uh, genomics investors uh, to understand that genomics definitely is a thing and it's going to make a lot of money in future. It has got great potential. And one more data point to prove that uh, is the prospect of prime editing candidate getting into phase one clinical trial under FDA. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And this video uh, is going to contrast uh, the beginning of CRISPR-Cas9, how it started, and how we identified all the weaknesses or, uh, or uh, risk factors in CRISPR-Cas9, and how that in turn has led to a lot of mitigating uh, activities so that CRISPR-Cas9 can be used safely, and the success that has been achieved in all those avenues and Part of that was the discovery of base and gene editing to avoid double strand breaks. So what does this all mean for a genomics investor? So this video is important to you if you are a genomic investor and want to understand the business in which you are putting your hard earned money, uh, I would advise you to watch till the end. And if you have any friends who are investors in genomics, please send this video to them so that they can understand uh, the CRISPR-Cas9 and the gene editing business, how it is progressing and the promise it holds. Of course, this is not something that's going to give you results overnight. Uh, it's a long-term game, uh, but we are getting closer. It's getting warmer and uh, soon there should be profitability. And if you had seen my video from yesterday about why CRISPR therapeutics has got to keep on running to stay ahead of the pack, you will understand that monetization has already happened with CRISPR-Cas9 with low hanging fruits. And now there's going to be refinement of the same sickle cell disease therapies and better therapies will come up with more higher safety profile and better patient comfort. And in the parallel, we are going to see base and prime editing hitting the prime time. And that will be very interesting to see. So there'll be a lot of opportunities for investors, a lot of opportunities for patients to have a better outcome. That said, Let's get started. Welcome back friends. Since the groundbreaking introduction of CRISPR-Cas9, the field of gene editing has witnessed remarkable achievements and advancements transforming the landscape of genetic therapies. Initially celebrated for its precision, CRISPR-Cas9 operates like a molecular scissors. This is what you hear. Uh, it uses a guide RNA to locate a specific DNA sequence and a Cas9 protein to cut both strands of the DNA at the target. However, this pioneering technology was not without challenges. And most of the viewers of this channel who have been watching us for a long time, you know all those challenges very well. But for the new ones who are watching these videos for the first time, let me say that the process of double strand breaks or DSBs uh, introduced by Cas9 sometimes led to imprecise repairs by the cell because the cell does auto repair whenever uh, there is a cut in the DNA. And this kind of results in unintended mutations or disruptions elsewhere in the genome. Over time, extensive research has addressed these initial limitations. Scientists have mapped out in the genome there are regions where CRISPR-Cas9 editing should be avoided so that we can reduce the risk of unwanted, unwanted consequences and um, uh, cancer-causing edits. More importantly, this period of investigation has catalyzed the development of advanced gene editing methods that bypass the need for double-strand breaks altogether, leading to safer and more controlled genetic modifications. Two such innovations are base editing and prime editing. Brace editing re refines the uh, CRISPR approach by employing a modified Cas9 protein, which still targets specific DNA sequences, but does not induce breaks in the DNA strand. Instead, it pairs with an enzyme called deaminase to directly convert one DNA base into another. It's like changing A to G and C to T. This technique allows for highly precise edits at the single base level, significantly reducing the effects of off-target effects and unintentional mutations. Prime editing pushes the boundaries of precision even further and scientists have more or less described it as a search and replace tool for DNA. Just like in Microsoft Word or a word processor, you can say find all instances for, of F-O-R where F is capital and O-R is small case 
and replace with for where all three alphabets are small case it can do that uh, search and replace the same way prime editing is described as search and replace tool for dna so prime editing utilizes a combination of a modified cas9 protein and a revert, reverse transcriptase enzyme this system enables the insertion deletion or replacement of dna sequences without breaking both strands of the double dna helix and the precision and versatility of prime editing makes it an invaluable tool in the growing gene editing toolkit uh, especially for conditions that require intricate genetic corrections the regulatory landscape for gene editing therapies has evolved alongside these technological advances initially the us fda approved crispr based therapies with caution often issuing holds on clinical trial to ensure safety and i think these holds were put at one time on crispr therapeutics and at another time on verve however uh, the increasing sophistication and reduced risk associated with newer editing methods have bolstered the fda's confidence and also fda's own experience with crispr cas9 based therapies has given them a greater deal of confidence a testament to this growing uh, comfort of fda is the recent clearance granted to prime medicines for its first clinical trial using prime editing technology this trial set to test the efficacy of pm359 candidate for treating chronic granulomatous disease or cgd marks a significant milestone and the fda's decision to approve this trial without issuing a preliminary hold signals it, its confidence in the safety and potential of prime editing this move is particularly noteworthy given the fda's previously cautious stance on first in human trials for novel gene editing technologies as prime medicine trial progresses the biotech industry will closely monitor the outcomes not only for potential to treat uh, cgd but also as a broader validation of prime editing's capabilities the rapid transition from academic concept to clinical trial in just 4.5 years as compared to Uh, crispr cas9 taking around a decade uh, underscores the promise of prime editing and uh, being a therapeutic platform and also the ability of scientists and companies uh, to convert science into technology and deploy these editings for uh, prime time uh, and uh, create monetized therapies that can provide advanced treatment and advanced relief uh, to patients for diseases that did not have treatment so far or where the standard of care was lacking although prime medicine faces challenges including investor skepticism regarding the market potential of its initial target the success of this trial could pave the way for broader applications of prime editing in more prevalent conditions in conclusion the journey from crispr cas9 to prime editing illustrates the rapid evolution of gene editing technologies each step forward has brought us closer to safer more precise and more effective gene therapies the fda is growing comfort with these innovations as evidenced by its recent clear, recent clearance decisions heralds a new era in the treatment of genetic diseases with the potential to improve countless lives so that my friends is a very very positive uh, resounding um, uh, aspect of uh, gene therapy uh, that we should uh, definitely register because as uh, investors in uh, genomic medicine we have been having a tough time in the last 2 to 3 years where our faith in these technologies is getting shaken and that's happening more or less because of the high interest rate regime and the tight cash uh, situation which makes uh, venture capital uh, risk taking very very difficult so there is a lot of risk averseness in the market but as we look forward to the fed cutting interest rates uh, and um, that in turn could enable a higher level of risk taking and it can see the animal spirits come back into the genomic medicine market but as i said on one hand genomic medicine has to move fast and give really practical solutions and affordable solutions for hard to treat diseases in order to make a success and the shareholders are looking for a greater return while the patients are looking for uh, equitable costs and the governments and non profit organizations are looking for cost benefit analysis by comparing current standard of care with the cost of new gene therapies new gene therapies cost a lot right now not only because of the lack of uh, economy of scale but also the fact that they are pioneering the market and the technologies they are using are all niche technologies but as time goes by and as more and more gene therapies 
get approved, we are going to have economies of scale coming up in the manufacturing side as well. And uh, uh, more people buying the same therapies could mean that there'll be uh, expertise and uh, much more um, economy of scale coming in. And therefore the costs are likely to go down. And as pa patents start to expire, there would be uh, even less expenses involved. But at this point of time, I think the way we have the patent regime, it's very important to have those so that we can still have venture capital coming in, risk capital flowing into this uh, sector, so that uh, hard, uh, hard sought after therapies can be put into research and um, uh, viable solutions can be delivered uh, through the FDA approval process to the patient and the end user. So my friends, with that, I would like to leave you with an optimistic note. Uh, I think uh, having looked at CRISPR-Cas9 spawning out uh, SCD and TDD therapies, uh, which are approved by FDA and are now available worldwide. I think that was the first step. The second step was approval of a base editing therapy uh, by uh, FDA to get into clinical trials. So that was the second one. And of course, that therapy was put on hold for a while because FDA wanted to know that there'll be no germline impact. And that has been proved and the therapy uh, clinical trial has uh, resumed for base editing. And now we have news that prime editing is making its debut uh, through uh, prime medicine. And that's, uh, that completes the trio of technologies, main technologies that we have uh, that have now entered into uh, FDA clinical trials. So that's a huge step forward and we should all celebrate that and have confidence that in the long run, genomic uh, medicine is going to be a good investment to be in. Uh, but at this point of time, I would say that uh, I am particularly more of a swing trader in gene technologies. I'm watching certain counters like CRISPR therapeutics, uh, editors, uh, Bluebird and I'm looking at possibilities of swing trading and I'm not staying invested I'm moving in and out of it and I'm making money but I still believe that if you stay invested for the long term you may eventually make a lot of money but in between it's going to be a wild roller coaster ride so if you don't have stomach for that then you should think twice before investing in gene technologies so with that my friends I would like to bring this video to an end and I'm trying to make a, a concerted effort from this point on uh, to improve the quality of our programming and give you more depth analysis on gene technologies and the diseases itself so that you can become a more informed investor. I'll also be coming up with uh, videos. I've already started that where videos talking about technical analysis of these uh, stocks. We are also doing AI. So we want to improve our viewership. We have a lot of subscribers now, but we want to improve the viewership count. And I would invite your feedback to let me know what I can do to improve your viewing pleasure so that you watch more of the videos. With that, my friends, this video comes to an end. Thanks and have a great day. I look forward to your comments. 